So let's start with something very simple. It's called a figure of eight knot. We're going to make a bit of a loop. We're going to bring the rope round the back and then through from the front to make a figure of eight. So once again, we make a loop. We bring the rope round the back and then from the front, we go to the back. And that makes a figure of eight. Figure of eight is very good because it's a stopper knot, stops the rope coming through. And afterwards, because the way the turns are very smooth turns, it's fairly simple to open the figure of eight up and come back to our original piece of rope. Now we're going to do a bowline or a bowline. We actually pronounce it bowline, although it's written bowline. And what a bowline does, it makes a loop in the end of a rope that doesn't get bigger or smaller. So it's not like a hangman's noose. And to do that is quite easy. Here is the rope. I take the free end, I put a cross over the top, I put my fingers like this and give it a twist. Now, if you, if you imagine, this part is like a snake coming out of a hole. The snake comes around the back of the tree. The snake goes back down the hole. I now hold the snake's head and tail together and then pull the tree. And that is a bowling. One more time. I take the free end. I put it at 90 degrees over the rest of the rope. I then give it a little twist like this and now I can imagine I've got a snake coming out of a hole. The snake comes out of the hole, it goes round the back of the tree, comes back down the hole. I take the snake's head and tail together and pull the tree and there is a bowling. So here is a sheet bend. It's joining a thin rope and a thick rope together. How do we do it? With a thick rope, we make a U-turn. With a thin rope, we come from underneath. We go underneath all of the thick rope. And now we put a tuck underneath. And that makes a sheet bend. If I want to make it more secure, I go through two times and this is called a double sheet bend. So here's how we tie a clove hitch. We put the tail end over the top, and bring him to the left, again over the top, but this time to the right. Bring the loose end, the tail end through the middle, and there's our clove hitch. To undo, we pull the diagonal, and we undo the knot. Very, very simple. This knot is a good, strong hitch. We call it a knot, actually, it's called a hitch. So again, we put the the free end, the tail end, over the top and to the left. Now over the top and to the right. Up through the middle, there's our clove hitch. If we want to adjust the clove hitch, or adjust the length of this rope or this part of the rope, we pull the diagonal and then move the rope how we want it to be. Move the diagonal, pull the rope how we want it to be. Move the diagonal adjust the rope. Move the diagonal, adjust the rope. Move the diagonal, adjust the rope. Move the diagonal, adjust the rope. So it's a very versatile knot. This is great for tying a fender. You could have a fender here 
and you could adjust the height of the fender depending on which berth you were going to and the state of tide if it wasn't a floating pontoon. So, the clove hitch. So we've talked about a clove hitch before. The other one that's very good, or the other good hitch that's very good, is what we call a rolling hitch. And a rolling hitch is good to stop the rope sliding. So maybe I want to fasten a rope here and I don't want it to slide this way. So what I'm going to do, same as before, over the top to the left, over the top again to the left. So the direction I don't want the rope to slide, I'm going to put two turns. Now I just finish like a clove hitch over the top to the other side, through the middle, and there's the rolling hitch. Now you'll notice we've got the same diagonal, the difference is here we've got two, two turns. So if I pull, try to pull the rope this way, I've now got double the friction as if I was to pull that way. So this is called a rolling hitch, two turns in the direction you don't want to slide. So again, very, very simple, over the top, two times in the direction we don't want to slide, and then finish off as per normal. And there's a rolling hitch with the diagonal. This part would be a clove hitch, but it's got two turns on, so it's a rolling hitch. And this will stop or reduce the sliding in this direction because of this extra friction with the two turns. Now we're going to do a round turn and two half hitches. I tend to call that the two and two because it's easy to remember what we have to do. So we're going to go over the top, one and two. So that's the first part of the two and two. And now to stop the rope coming undone, we're going to put two locking turns in. That's the first and that's the second. So you can see we've got two turns and two locking turns. I call this the two and two. The correct name is the round turn and two half hitches. This is a very secure hitch and what's really good, even if this rope, this part here is on tension, I can adjust very easily, make my adjustment and then finish off with my two locking tucks. So here we have a round turn and two half hitches, or you can remember this as the two and two.